Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary and Joseph be blessed now and forever in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let your light shine before men that they may know and see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have a great bishop and doctor of the church today in God's providence. We celebrate the feast of St. Francis de Sales, this great spiritual father, this guide of our spiritual lives, a religious celebrity even in his own day and age. He was humble and tough, a zealous priest and bishop. He was holy and known to be holy by everyone, especially those closest to him. He mingled easily with princes, with kings and popes, who enjoyed his charming and educated company. He incessantly crisscrossed his diocese on foot and horseback, destroying his own health to visit the poor and humble faithful who were drawn to him as much as the highborn. He embodied to the fullest that extraordinary pastoral and intellectual zeal characteristics of great saints which makes one wonder if he ever rested for a moment or slept a single night. This great saint, the Dayton, was born in 1567 and lived most of his life in what is today southeast France. His father ensured that he received an excellent education from a young age, and his son excelled then in every subject. His intellectual gifts, his holiness, and engaging personality made him almost inevitably an ideal candidate for the priesthood and eventually the episcopacy. He was duly appointed the Bishop of Geneva a generation after the famous, the infamous John Calvin, a former future priest, had turned that deeply Catholic city into a Protestant Rome leaving St. Francis as Bishop of Geneva in little but name only. Shortly after becoming Bishop then, St. Francis de Sales met St. Jane, Jane Francis de Chantal, a widow. Between the two saints there grew this beautiful, deep spiritual friendship. St. Francis then became the spiritual director of Jane Francis, and with her, he founded in 1610 the religious order of the nuns known as the Order of the Visitation or the Visitandines. In carrying out his mystery then, St. Francis, his weapon, his weapon of choice for conversion of souls was the pen. His apologetic and spiritual works brought back tens of thousands of lapsed Catholics to the faith after they had dabbled, dabbled in this Calvinism. St. Francis' works were so profound, original, and creative, and his love of God so straightforward and understandable that he would be declared a doctor of the church in 1877. In his well and most known famous book, Introduction, Introduction to the Devout Life, he addressed himself to people who live in towns, within families, or in a court. His wise spiritual advice encouraged the faithful to seek perfection in the mechanic shop and in the soldier's regiment. God's will was to be found everywhere, not just in the monasteries and the convents. Most arduous pastoral trips through the mountains of his native region eventually wore this great saint out. He never insisted on preferential treatment despite his status. He slept and ate and traveled as a common man would. 
when he lay dying, mute after a terrible stroke. A nun asked him if he had any words of wisdom to impart his last words. He asked for some paper and wrote three words on it. Humility, humility, humility. St. Francis then is buried in a beautiful bronze sepulchre displaying his likeness in the Visitation Basilica and Convent in Annecy in France. He was especially then, today, what we can learn from him, esteemed for his magnificent and heroic meekness. meekness. In the world today, many view this solid virtue as weakness, and even as some form of effeminity. But we have to shout from the rooftops that this meekness is not weakness, for meekness, if it be the real thing, is strength, the strength of a lion, like Christ. According to truth himself, Jesus Christ, those who will possess the land will not be the mighty conquerors, but the meek. Meekness is not cowardice, human respect or timidness. It does not oppose zeal, fortitude, or any other virtue. Rather, it strengthens them. True meekness is part of the virtue of temperance, and it opposes the vice of anger. Interestingly, both St. Francis de Sales and St. Vincent de Paul were known for their gentleness, mildness, patience, and meekness. They both had a fiery temper and were easily provoked to anger. These they conquered by the manly practice of virtue. From the book Spiritual Diary, we can learn the wisdom of this meekness. Francis de Sales says to us, if possible, never become angry and always reject any pretext for allowing anger to gain admission to your heart. For once it has entered, you will no longer be able to banish it when you desire or moderate it. If however, if however you find that because of your weakness it has gained foothold, foothold in your heart, summon all your willpower and see that you set your heart at peace. But you must do so serenely, never violently. This was the practice of many saints who were never known to become angry. What about the great Saint Philip Neri? It is said that for the good of his spiritual children, he sometimes assumed a stern expression, but as soon as they were out of sight, he would turn to someone present and say, do you think I looked angry? And at once, he usually serene expression would return. The means of overcoming anger are, these are good spiritual maxims for us to learn. Forestall such feelings as much as possible, or at least punish them at once by thinking of something else. In the imitation of the apostles, when the storm arose on the sea, have recourse to God, who will restore peace to your heart. While you are boiling in your passions, do not talk or offer any opposition concerning the point in question. Strive to be humble and courteous towards the person with whom you feel angry, especially he has shown resentment in any way. The great saint of today continues, a very essential means of acquiring meekness of heart is to form the habit of doing everything and saying everything, important or unimportant, calmly and without haste. Act in this manner in times of tranquility, and thus you will accustom your heart to gentleness. Francis himself practiced this advice with excellent manner, for he was never known to act hastily. To someone who asked him the reason, his, he replied, you asked me how I can remain calm and not become upset when those around me are all bustling about. What can I say to you? I did not come into the world to agitate it. It is sufficiently agitated already. He says also, be assured that all disturbing, upsetting thoughts do not come from the Lord, 
who is the Prince of Peace. They come either from the devil or from our own self-love, or from the high opinion we obtain, we entertain of ourselves. There are the three fonts of all our troubles. When such thoughts come into our mind, we should banish them immediately and pay no attention to them. This is the reason why Francis himself was never disturbed or upset. He paid no attention to the temptations of the devil, who was always a sworn, who was, who always a sworn enemy of self-love and was humble of heart. He says also, humble goodness is the virtue of virtues. Verily highly recommended by our Lord, hence we should practice it always and everywhere. Evil must be avoided, but calmly. Good must be done, but always with serenity. Follow this rule that you, that which you can see can be done in charity. Do what cannot be done without dispute. Do not do. In other words, peace and tranquility of soul must always take preference over all our actions. Of St. Francis de Sales, then, we read that he enjoyed this magnificent and perturbed peace of heart. He himself said one day, what can possibly disturb our peace? Even if the world should turn upside down, like what we have today, I would not become disturbed. Of what value is the world in comparison to the peace of heart? Thus he acted whenever the occasions presented themselves. So we ask today then, the mother of meekness itself, the Blessed Virgin Mary, to possess this wonderful gift of meekness to conquer all hearts for the kingdom of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.